Yes. Secretary Rusk on one. Uh, we have a telegram from Saigon. Uh, the South Vietnamese would like to put in their reply to Utah before Guam, so it would not look as though it was sort of dictated to them at Guam. Their reply um, accepts uh, Utah's proposal in principle, but then it makes two suggestions. One, that a military truce ought to be uh, worked out by the military commanders past meeting in the demilitarized zone between North and South. And secondly, that uh, they, they, was, they suggest that we just go on to an international conference among the interested governments. Uh, they don't reject the idea of preliminary talks, but they, they, they say, why don't we just have a conference? Now, um, this is consistent with various things that we have said, but I think there is some point in their going ahead and putting in their reply uh, before Guam. On our own reply, um, there's nothing in it that we have not said many times before. And if uh, Arthur Goldberg were to make clear to the Secretary General that we've made many diplomatic approaches to Hanoi without success, and they failed to agree to discussions, and uh, we should <coughs> not suppose that um, we're going to take uh, further preconditions which Hanoi might seek here, and that we're not prepared to accept Secretary General's proposals and negotiate down from them. Um, I think there is some advantage in getting the, getting these things off. So there's, there's nothing in our reply that we haven't uh, we haven't said publicly on a number of occasions. So I would think we ought to go ahead and make it quite clear to the Secretary General that um, uh, he must uh, try to try to negotiate us down without anything from Hanoi in his hands. Well. Uh I just have this thought. Uh, I proceed from one negotiation to the other, constantly uh, uh, waiting uh, uh, for something that never comes, and uh, usually uh, find myself uh, uh, in worse shape at the end of the proposal than I do at the beginning. And I think that at the time, after all these attempts, 1520 that we have agreed to, time ought to come sometime when one of these proposers, these guys that like to get into these acts all the time, would at least uh, be told that uh, you bring us something and you'll find a pleasant and favorable response. Mm -hmm. But uh, you don't take anything from us until you get something from them. I just think we ought to. Because if we don't, I'm very fearful that you'll be in here next week and say, now, Mr. President, I just don't think we ought to be doing this this week on account of so-and-so. Now, we constantly do that, and uh, uh, three years of it, and we're on borrowed time now, and just a few months uh, here before the judgment day. And I think when, uh, uh, I don't think Utah is our friend. I don't think he'll do much uh, for us, except embarrass us. I think the whole uh, outfit up there is a potentially very embarrassing thing. So I just want to meet them as, as, as frankly as I can to begin with and say, now, uh, you go and show, show us what you can deliver, and your problem will not be with us. Uh, we'll, we'll be reasonable, but I, I don't want to I don't want to be saying that we are willing to do so and so and so and so until we know what they will do. Now, heretofore, we've been, we've been doing this, but that hadn't produced anything. And I wish we could just one time say to them, uh, tell us what you'll do. That's well, my feeling. Yeah, well, I, uh, I'm afraid that you and Bob will be in next week saying, well, now, we agreed to this. We told him to go ahead, and we would uh, do so-and-so. And I'm terribly afraid of these negotiations at this stage because I don't think they want them, and I don't think they're ready for them, and I don't think they're prepared to give a damn thing. And if they were prepared, I'd be more frightened than I am because uh, I don't think they're prepared to give what we must have. And I think the time, we have a limited time to go ahead and get ourselves in condition. And, and I'm, I don't want anybody interfering with it, with the Ronnings or with the British Prime Minister or with Kosygin or any of these folks, if we can. I think I'm prepared to pay the price uh, with public sentiment uh, going against me if uh, Utah to, does this. But I know this, that when Utah makes a proposal, or Bobby Kennedy makes one, or somebody else one, although we are ready to do our part, it just costs us five or ten points next week. We get their hopes up, and then the people say, oh, good God, here it is. 
And then they failed again. Each time we strike out. It's just like Mickey Mantle coming to the bat and we strike out. And I don't want to give them enough uh, hope. I think that it's going to be a strikeout, and I think it's going to cost me another five or ten points and a lot of criticism. So I'd like to put them off till the atmosphere is a little better, until there's some chance. I think that with this Constitution, if it comes through out there, and if we can get an election in 90 days and uh, have that work out well, I think we're going to be in a lot better condition than we are now. And I don't want to just say, no, we will not. But I think we could say we are ready and willing if you can show us anything from them, period. Now, uh, what, what we'll do depends on what they ask. But if they bring us another Pope's letter, why, well, you know what the answer is going to be. Now, is he in a position to get much better thing than the Pope? If he did, I'd be frightened because I might have to say no. No, I think, uh, I think our problem here is uh, uh, stems from the fact that uh, Bhutan is not helpful to us and that um, he would uh, he would parlay this thing into a, an appeal over our heads to public opinion here and abroad unless we unless we put something in that would just uh, <clears throat> just cut across that. Um, now the uh, the uh, substance of what is in our in, in our proposed reply uh, is, is simply something that we've said uh, many times before. We had different conditions before, though, Dean. We 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 had 80 percent before, and we're down to under 40 now, and we're getting weaker all the time. And we've said uh, before we'd have pauses, and we've had three of them. But the situation's a lot different now, and we just finished uh, the last uh, big negotiation with, with Wilson and Kosygin. And I think we came out of it worse than we went into it. And we just played with the, the mothers of this country, indicating there's some chance, and, this, and there's just one little uh, eyelash, and it would have been a peace in the world, according to Wilson. And I think that's cool. Well, I, I backed around at the press yesterday when they asked me about uh, this business, and this looked um, all the room was all point to one French. Where is Hanar? What are they doing? And unless you get an answer to that question, you haven't got the peace yet. That's right. That's right. That's what I want us to tell you, Todd and Goldberg, because they're not up to any good purpose. They just, they just, they'll just, uh, they just think it's a problem with the Hawks and Johnson and Rusk and the generals and, and so on and so forth. And uh, you, you, you would have no problem about uh, about uh, the South Vietnam going in. Well, I want to give them any leadership that you think you can, consistent with my feeling. I just don't want you to get grabbed with a nap the neck and hauled into some kind of a meeting and go repeat Korea all over. And I think that you're playing in an uh, explosive minefield, and, and I don't trust the, uh, these people that are leading us into it. I don't think their motives are, are, are pro-Johnson. Uh, is there a hint Yes, I want that to chart. Yes, I want to take that, and I want to take this, take the attitude I'm taking now. I want you to take the position, and I got it from you. Usually, I just repeat what you've said a week before, but I want you to point out that they don't hang up. They they don't answer you on the phone, and you've said it, and you've said it, and you've said it. And the time comes that when you you get out and you make your public plea, and you get on your knees and you walk, it comes time when a proud country just thinks that they they ought to keep their men standing and waiting uh, again for these things and until they show some seriousness. Now, you see no reason why we ought to jump in and say peace, peace, peace. Now, we want peace more than anybody, but the best way to get peace is to be a little bit firm and have a little dignity and, and support these men out there. And uh, You do that very well, but I would really uh, go awfully strong on it and uh, I, would, uh, uh, I would show you charts go over them and say, now here's 17 nations, and we did it in one day. We met our Security Council and our president. We said, yes, sir, and they said, no, no, no. Now they said no to 17 of them. And here's the last thing they've said. This is the Pope. Now I want you to read these, and I want all of you to remember, governors. It's four things they told us we had to get the hell out of there. Yeah. We had to stop our bombing. We had to turn it over to the Vietcom Congress. Now, we just can't do those things, and that's the last thing they said. Now, all this private stuff, we don't have to depend on Weinstein or Bill Baggs or any traveling people. We can talk directly to this man. This is his attitude, and he, he confirmed it to us, and he confirmed it to the Pope.
Right. Yeah. Now on the on the Goldberg thing, uh, uh, you uh, you uh, it's your judgment that I want to follow, but I sure want you to know and in, in making your decision, I want you to know my instincts. All right, man. Thank you.